जय अद्वित चंद्र जय गोर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चेतन जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वित चंद्र जय गोर भक्त वृंद Hare Krishna we starting reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita today and this will go up to Gaur Purnim so today we will start with chapter 3 the external reasons for the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and we will try cover first 18 texts so it's a reading mostly it will be reading and just sharing some important points om gyanati mirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurve nama shri chaitanya manobishtam sthapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadamayam dadati svapadantikam जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वंशकल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्या च पतिताम पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम सो यूल स्टार्ट विद द समरी इन दिस चैप्टर द ओथर हेज फुली डिस्कस द एक्सटर्नल रीजन्स फॉर द डिसेंट ऑफ श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हैड लोड श्री कृष्ण after displaying his past times as lord krishna thought it wise to make his advent in the form of a devotee to explain personally the transcendental mellows of reciprocal service and love exchanged between himself and his servants friends parents and fiancees according to the vedic literature the foremost occupational duty for humanity in this age of kali is nama sankirtan or congregational chanting of the holy name of the lord the incarnation for this age especially preaches this process but only krishna himself can explain the confidential loving service performed in the four principal varieties of loving affairs between the supreme lord and his devotees lord krishna therefore personally appeared with his plenary portions as lord chaitanya as stated in this chapter it was for this purpose that lord krishna appeared personally in navadvip in the form of shri krishna chaitanya mahaprabhu krishna das kaviraj has here in presented much authentic evidence from shrimad bhagavatam and other scriptures to substantiate the identity of lord chaitanya with shri krishna himself He has described bodily symptoms in Lord Chaitanya that are visible only in the person of the Supreme Lord and he has proved that Lord Chaitanya appeared with his personal associates Shri Nityananda Advaita Gadadhar Shivas and other devotees to preach the special significance of chanting Hare Krishna 
The appearance of Lord Chaitanya is both significant and confidential. He can be appreciated only by pure devotees and only through the process of devotional service. The Lord tried to conceal his identity as the Supreme Personality of Godhead by representing himself as a devotee. But his pure devotees could recognize him by his special features. The Vedas and Puranas foretell the appearance of Lord Chaitanya, but still he is sometimes called significantly the concealed descent of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Advaita Acharya was a contemporary of Lord Chaitanya's father. He felt sorry for the condition of the world because even after Lord Krishna's appearance, no one had interest in devotional service to Krishna. This forgetfulness was so overwhelming that Advaita Prabhu was convinced that no one but Lord Krishna himself could enlighten people about devotion service to the Supreme Lord. Therefore, Advaita requested Lord Krishna to appear as Lord Chaitanya, offering tulsi leaves and Ganges water. He cried for the Lord's appearance. The Lord, being satisfied by his pure devotees, descends to satisfy them. As such, being pleased by Advaita Acharya, Lord Chaitanya appeared. Text one. So I will read first three texts and then I was told text four we can chant together. Shri Chaitanya Prabhu Vande Yat Pada Shreya Virata Sangranati Akar Vrata Agya Siddhanta Sanmanin Translation I offer my respectful obeisances to Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by the potency of the shelter of his lotus feet even a fool can collect the valuable jewels of conclusive truth from the minds of the revealed scriptures. Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Advaita Chandra Jaya Gura Bhakta Vrinda All glories to Lord Chaitanya, all glories to Lord Nityananda, all glories to Advaita Chandra, and all glories to all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. Tritiya slokera artha kela vivaran chaturtha slokera artha suna bhakta gan I have given the purport of the third verse. Now, O devotees, please listen to the meaning of the fourth with full attention. So let's chant this verse with full attention. Anarpita charim chirat karunaya vatir nakalo Samarpaitum unnatu jvalara samswa bhakti shriyam Hari purata sundara dyuti kadam sandipita Sadahridaya Kandaris Furatuva Sachinandana Anarpita Charim Chirat Karunaya Vatirinakalo Samarpaitam Unnatujvala Rasam Swabhakti Shriyam Hari Purata Sundara Dyuti Kadam Sandipita Hari Purata 
सदा हृदया कंदरेश्वर तुवा सचिनंदना वन मोर टाइम अनर्पिता चरिम चिरात करुणाय अवतीर ना कलो समर्पय तुम उन्न तुज्वला रसाम स्वभक्ति श्रियम हरिपुरा त सुंदरा द्युति कदम्ब संदीपिता सदा हृदया कंदरी स्फुर्तुवा सचिनंदना Translation May the Supreme Lord who is known as the son of Srimati Sachi Devi be transcendently situated in the innermost core of your heart. How many of you would like that? Resplendent with the radiance of molten gold, he has descended in the age of Kali by his causeless mercy to bestow what no incarnation has ever offered before. The most elevated mellow of devotion service, the mellow of conjugal love. Purport. This is a quotation from the Vidagda Madhava 1.2 a drama compiled and edited by Srila Rupa Goswami. Text 5 Purna Bhagavan Krishna Vrajendra Kumar Golo Kevraje Rasaha Nitya Vihar Lord Krishna, the son of the king of Vraja, is the supreme lord. He eternally enjoys transcendental pastimes in his eternal abode, Goloka, which includes Rajadham. Purport. In the previous chapter, it has been established that Krishna, the son of Vrajendra, the king of Raja, is the supreme personality of Godhead with six opulences. He eternally enjoys transcendently variegated opulences on his planet, which is known as Goloka. The eternal pastimes of the Lord in the spiritual planet Krishna Loka are called Aprakat or unmanifested pastimes because they are beyond the purview of the conditioned souls. Lord Krishna is always present everywhere, but when he is not present before our eyes, he is said to be aprakrta or unmanifested. So I remember on this one, Srila Prabhupada, he gave example of the sun. So now today is a cloudy day, we cannot see the sun but it doesn't mean the sun is not there. Somewhere in some other part of the world where it's not raining, one can see the sun. Or um, I heard from my spiritual master, like those, I guess most of you have experience of flying. Uh, if you go above the clouds, the sun, people who are flying, they can still see the sun. So, same way, Krishna's pastimes are eternal, Nitya Leela, and those devotees who are in spontaneous, loving relationship with Krishna, they see those pastimes eternally. But those who are not there, they cannot see them eternally. And therefore, it's mentioned there are aprakat pastimes and prakat pastimes. So, in Srimad Bhagavatam, most of the pastimes we hear, they are like prakat pastimes that Lord performed when he took avatar. And, um, but Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's advanced 
text so it also talks about uh, different prakrta and aprakrta both text 6 brahmara ek dine ti ho ek bar avatirna haya kare na prakat vihar once in a day of brahma he descends to this world to manifest his transcendental pastimes can anyone guess how long is one day of brahma so in bhagavad gita krishna gives the duration of life of brahma sahasra yuga paryantam thousand <coughs> divya yugas and uh, one divya yuga is like combination of uh, these four yugas satya treta dwapar and kali that makes one divya yugas so there are thousand divya yugas in one day of brahma and same is the night satya treta dwapar kali chari yuge jani se chari yuge divya ek yuga mani we know that there are four ages yugas namely satya treta dwapar and kali these four together constitute one divya yuga ekatar chatur yuge ek mane an ek manvantara choda manvantra brahmara divas bitara 71 divya yugas constitute one manvantra there are 14 manvantras in one day of brahma purport a manvantra is the period controlled by one manu the reign of 14 manus equals the length of one day 12 hours in the life of brahma and the night of brahma is of the same duration these calculations are given in the authentic astronomy book known as the surya siddhanta a bengali translation of this book was compiled by the great professor of astronomy and mathematics bimala prasad datta does anyone know who is bimala prasad datta um only one <laughs> that's great <laughs> extra prasadam for you prabhu a uh, a bengali translation oh uh, yeah so later known as bhakti siddhanta saraswati goswami who was our merciful spiritual master he was honored with the title siddhanta saraswati for translating the surya siddhanta and the title goswami maharaj was added when he accepted sanyas the renounced order of life vevasvata nam e saptam manvantar sataisha chatur yuga tahara antar the present manu who is the seventh is called vevasvata the son of vivaswan 27 divya yugas of his age have now passed the names of the 14 manus are as follows swambhuva swarochisa uttama tamasa revata chakshusha vevasvata savarni daksha savarni brahma savarni dharma savarni rudra putra rudra savarni rochya or deva savarni and bhotyaka or indra savarni ashtavimsha chatur yuge dwapare ra sheshe vraje ra sahite haya krishnera prakashe 
at the end of the Dwapar Yuga of the 28th Divya Yuga, Lord Krishna appears on earth with the full paraphernalia of his eternal Vrajadham. Now is the term of Vavasvata Manu during which Lord Chaitanya appears. First, Lord Krishna appears at the close of the Dwapar Yuga of the 28th Divya Yuga and then Lord Chaitanya appears in the Kali Yuga of the same Divya Yuga. Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya appear once in each day of Brahma or once in 14 Manvantaras, each of 71 Divya Yugas in duration. From the beginning of Brahma's day of 4 billion 320 million years, six Manus appear and disappear before Lord Krishna appears. Thus, 1,975,320,000 years of the day of Brahma elapse before the appearance of Lord Krishna. This is an astronomical calculation according to solar years. Dasya Sakya Vatshalya Shingar Chari Ras Chari Bhavera Bhaktya Yat Krishna Tara Vash Servitude Dasya Friendship Sakya Parental Affection Vatshalya and Conjugal Love Shingar are the four transcendental mellows, rasas. By the devotees who cherish these four mellows, Lord Krishna is subdued. Purport. Dasha, Sakya, Vatshalya and Shingar are the transcendental modes of loving service to the Lord. Shantaras or the neutral stage is not mentioned in this verse because although in Shantaras one considers the absolute truth, the sublime great, one does not go beyond that conception. Shantaras is a very grand idea for materialistic philosophers, but such idealistic appreciation is only the beginning. It is the lowest among the relationship in the spiritual world. Shantaras is not given much importance because as soon as there is, is a slight understanding between the knower and the known, active loving transcendental reciprocations and exchanges begin. Dasharas is the begin basic relationship between Krishna and his devotees. Therefore, this verse considers Dasha the first stage of transcendental devotional service. So here we can see uh, Shantaras, Srila Prabhupada says in the purport that Shantaras is a very grand idea for materialistic philosophers but such idealistic appreciation is only the beginning. So coming to Bhakti one can see this and one can understand and gradually progress through different stages but it's mentioned uh, even for devotees in higher rasas the dasharas is always there it, no matter what uh, rasa may they may be friends or they may be like in parental mood or in uh, conjugal loving relationship uh, the the mood of Offering service to Krishna is always there. Da, 
दास सखा पिता माता कांता गण लाया व्रजे क्रीड़ा करे कृष्णा प्रेमा विस्ता हाया एब्जोर्ब्ड इन सच ट्रांसनेट लव लॉर्ड श्री कृष्णा इंजॉयज इन व्रज विद हिज डिवोटेड सर्वेंट्स फ्रेंड्स पेरेंट्स एंड कॉन्जुगल लवर्स द डिसेंट ऑफ श्री कृष्णा प्रपुर The descent of Shri Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead, is very purposeful. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that one who knows the truth about Shri Krishna's descent and his various activities is at once liberated and does not have to fall again to this existence of birth and death after he leaves his present material body. Uh, those who are reading Bhagavad Gita among the newer devotees, can anyone guess what is this verse? It's in chapter 4. Yeah, it's uh, text 9. Janma karma chame divyam evam yoveti tatvata tyaktva deham punar janma neti mameti so arjuna. It's an important verse we should learn. In other words, one who factually understands Krishna makes his life perfect. Imperfect life is realized in material existence in five different relationships we share with everyone within the material world. Neutrality, servitorship, friendship, filial love and amorous love between husband and wife or lover and beloved. These five enjoyable relationships within the material world are perverted reflections of relationships with the absolute personality of Godhead in the transcendental nature. That absolute personality, Sri Krishna, descends to revive the five eternally existing relationships. Thus, he manifests his transcendental pastimes in Vraja so that people may be attracted into that sphere of activities and leave aside their imitation relationships with the mundane. Then, after fully exhibiting all such activities, the Lord disappears. यथेष्ट विहारी कृष्णा करे अंतर्धान अंतर्धान करे मने करे अनुमान सो नाउ वी विल हियर हाउ कृष्णा थिंक्स लॉर्ड कृष्णा एन्जॉयज हिज ट्रांसनेंटल पास टाइम्स एज लॉन्ग एज ही विशेस एंड देन ही डिसअपियर्स आफ्टर डिसअपियरिंग हाउएवर ही थिंक्स दस चिरकाल माही करी प्रेम भक्ति दान सॉरी चिरकाल नाही करी प्रेम भक्ति दान भक्ति बिना जग तेरा नाही अवस्थान फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम आई हैव नॉट बिस्टोड अन अलॉयड लविंग सर्विस टू मी अपॉन द इनहेबिटेंट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड विदाउट सच लविंग अटैचमेंट द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ द मटीरियल वर्ल्ड is useless so we can see from this verse what's the purpose of material world is to revive our loving attachment for lord krishna the lord seldom awards pure transcendental love but without such pure love of god freed from fruitive activities and imp empiric speculation one cannot attain perfection in life sakal jagate mora more kare vidhi bhakti vidhi bhakte vraj bhav paite nahi shakti everywhere in the world people worship me according to scriptural injunctions but simply by following such regulative principles one cannot attain the loving sentiments of the devotees in Vraja Bhumi. 
ऐश्वर्या ज्ञाने ते सब जगत मिश्रित ऐश्वर्या शिथिला प्रेमे नाई मोर प्रीता नोइंग माई ओपुलेंसिस दि होल वर्ल्ड लुक्स अपॉन मी विद ओ एंड वेनरेशन बट डिवोशन मेड फीबल बाय सच रेवरेंस डज नोट अट्रैक्ट मी प्रपोर्ट आफ्टर his appearance lord krishna thought that he had not distributed the transcendental personal dealings with his devotees in dasha sakya vatsalya and madhurya one may understand the signs of the supreme personality of god had from the vedic literatures and thus become a devotee of the lord and worship him within the regulative principles described in the scriptures but one will not know in this way how krishna is served by the residents of vraja bhumi one cannot understand the dealings of the lord in vrindavan simply by executing ritualistic regulative principles mentioned in the scriptures by following scriptural injunctions one may enhance his appreciation for the glories of the lord but there is no chance for one to enter into personal dealings with him giving too much attention to understanding the exalted glories of the lord reduces the chance of one's entering into personal loving affairs with the lord to teach the principle of such loving dealings the lord decided to appear as lord chaitanya so this chapter is entitled the external reasons for lord chaitanya's appearance so many times it can be seen or is misunderstood as external reasons are not important but one should remember whatever krishna does it's important it's significant um it's transcendental in nature so that's why krishna das kaviraj goswami is helping us understand these external reasons in this chapter yeah even uh, many people they think because in one of the previous purports we heard how or in the summary lord chaitanya came to teach by his example by especially chanting hari krishna naam sankirtan so many people think it's not very advanced activity to do even lord chaitanya was personally asked uh we see the big painting here on the ceiling when he was in banaras he was asked by all these uh, sanyasis this is a sentimental activity why are you doing this you are a sanyasi why don't you come and study vedas with us so um it can it is un- misunderstood by many people that preaching is not a very advanced activity but we can understand by hearing from devotees like krishna das kaviraj goswami and of course by transcendental purports of shila prabhupad um what's the correct understanding of these activities and therefore we should also understand the external reasons are also equally significant ऐश्वर्या ज्ञाने विधि भजन करिया वैकुंठा के आया चतुर्विध मुक्ति पाया बाय परफॉर्मिंग सच रेगुलेटेड डिवोशनल सर्विस इन ओ एंड वेनरेशन वन मे गो टू वैकुंठ एंड अटेन द फोर काइंड्स ऑफ लिबरेशन डज एनी वन नो वट आर वट आर दीज फोर काइंड Shamurari is far ahead. Sarshti, Saryupya, Ar, Samipya, Salokya, 
Sayujanalaya Bhaktya Bhakta Yate Brahma Aikya. These liberations are Sarshti, achieving opulences equal to those of the Lord. Who would want that? No one wants it. Sarupya, having a form the same as the Lord's. Anyone wants that? No takers. Samipya, living as a personal associate of the Lord. Still no. And Salokya, living on a Vakunta planet. Still no. Oh my God, no one wants it. Devotees never accept Sayuja, however, since that is oneness with Brahman. Purport. Thus, those, sorry, those engaged in devotional service according to the ritualistic principles mentioned in the scriptures attain these different kinds of liberation. But although such devotees can attain Sarshti, Sarupya, Samipya and Salokya, they are not concerned with these liberations, for such devotees are satisfied only in rendering transcendental loving service to the Lord. The fifth kind of liberation, Sayujya, is never accepted even by devotees who perform only ritualistic worship. Why? Why? Uh, Devotees don't accept Sayujya. Yeah, because uh, devotion service will stop. So that's why definitely no takers for that. <laughs> to attain Sayujya or merging into the Brahman effulgence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the aspiration of the impersonalists. A devotee never cares for Sayuja liberation. So these are all the texts we were going to study today. But uh, before you ask me anything, I will ask all of you a question. Now since it mentions that uh, just by performing regulative devotional service, one cannot attain uh, to Vrajabhumi. So my question to all of you is, what kind of service are we practicing here? Is it regulated or is it spontaneous or what would you say? Yes, Maharaj. So um, it mentions here that, sorry, I had to fix this. He mentions here that by following just the regulative devotion service, one cannot to attain to Vrajabhumi or spontaneous devotion service. One cannot attain Vrajabhumi. Um, so I was asking a question, what kind of service are we practicing here? Is it like a regulated uh, to say Vedi Bhakti or Raga Bhakti, to be more precise. So you would say it's a, it's Vedi Bhakti. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Anyone else? Uh, Brigupati Prabhu, Rabindranath Prabhu. Maybe he's closer. You can give it to him first. If you don't mind. Uh, it depends on the individual. If you're on that platform, you're on that platform. Just like Prabhupada says, if you know, if your hunger is satisfied, you know. You don't have to take a certificate from anybody. Yes. Like that. But outwardly, of course, in the temple, we observe uh, regulated devotional service. But inwardly is another thing. But you know yourself, you know, like that. Brigupati Prabhu. Yeah, I agree with what Rabindranath just said. Because, uh, uh, you know, we are performing regulated, but it's 
we are performing regulated, but it's, it's meant to develop to something beyond that. Otherwise, what would be the meaning of the statement you read in the purport where it says, Lord Chaitanya, he's specifically coming to give people these other rasas. Yes. See, so it's, you know, it's not meant to stop there. It's meant to, it has to start there. Yes. But it's meant to develop to something more than that. Otherwise, what's the purpose of, you know, what Lord Chit I mean, it doesn't make them. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Maharaj has, can anyone take the mic to Maharaj? Therefore, Srila Jiva Goswami, I think in Bhakti Sandarva describes what the devotees who aspire for uh, Braja Bhakti engage in early on is called Ajata Ruchi Raganuga Bhakti. Mm -hmm. They're engaged in Raganuga Bhakti, but since they don't have the taste, the, the regulations are kind of laid over. So it's sort of a fusion. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, what's your name? You wanted to say something? You had your hand up? No? Uh, Archita Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you for a nice reading. It comes, reminds me of that question that was asked of Ramashwar directly to Srila Prabhupada. Because the book distributors were saying that distributing books is in the mood of the gopis. <laughs> and other devotees were thinking, that's presumptuous. How can you say that? And Prabhupada said, yes, it is. So in the beginning, when we get any service from the spiritual master, we may not have that proper mood. But the service itself, because it's coming down in that line, yeah. and all of the predecessors are charged in our line, they're in that mood. So gradually that mood is revealed to you. Yes. If, if you follow the regulative principles and ex execute the devotional service as trained, not, again, speculating, which is what we tend to do. We're given a service, and rather than learning it, Precisely, we want to figure it out ourselves. That's the wrong attitude. If you really want to please anyone, it's just like when you give, take your car to the shop. You don't want the guy to just do whatever he wants. You tell him specifically, I want my tires inflated or rotated, whatever. And that's what he should do. Not, you know, speculate and do something else. So devotional service is like that. If we prove ourselves by following the devotional activity as trained, as given, then by pleasing the spiritual master, then gradually we attain the right mood. The activity will be the same you know, waving the incense or fanning the chakra. Yeah. But the mood will be different because we've been blessed. So both things have to be there. You have to follow the regulative principles and you have to act in that understanding, as Brigapati said, that I'm gradually going to attain the right mood and the right understanding and therefore the service will look the same, going out every day with the books, yes. but the internal mood will be different. Yeah. In the beginning you're just doing it by rote because that's what you're told to do, but the activity will be the same, but the mood will be different. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, I, I hope uh, everyone got the point. By, by performing these regulative activities, our spontaneous attraction will develop. And that's how one will qualify to Vrajabhumi. But I will read uh, in Nectar of Instruction, text 8. There is a comment of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and I think he explained it very beautifully. I'll just read that. Bhakti, this is in the purport, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur has commented as follows upon this verse, because this verse talks about uh, following a Raga Nuga devotee to attain Raga Bhakti. So we all are following Srila Prabhupada in the line of Rupa Goswami who was personally instructed by Lord Chaitanya to educate everyone about bhakti. So here you go. Only one who has not yet developed interest in Krishna consciousness should give up all material motives. Is a, I don't know. I mean, it's a contradictory situation in statement in one sense, like one who does not have interest in Krishna consciousness, how can they give up all material motives? But this is what he's starting with. One who has not yet developed interest in Krishna consciousness, so by interest he means actually spontaneous interest. Um, one should give up all material motives and train his mind by following the progressive regulative principles, namely chanting and remembering Krishna 
and his name, form, quality, pastimes and so forth. In this way, after developing a taste for such things, one should try to live in Vrindavan and pass his time constantly remembering Krishna's name, fame, pastimes and qualities under the direction and protection of an expert devotee. This is the sum and substance of all instruction regarding the cultivation of devotional service. In the neophyte stage, that's what Prabhus were describing that it's an individual thing. Someone may be just in beginning stage and someone may be already at a spontaneous loving stage. So in the neophyte stage, one should always engage in hearing Krishna Katha. This is called Shravana Das, the stage of hearing. By constantly hearing the transcendental holy name of Krishna and hearing of his transcendental form, qualities and pastimes, one can attain to the stage of acceptance called Varanadas. When one attains this stage, he becomes attached to the hearing of Krishna Katha. So everyone can ask this question to themselves if how much they are attached to hearing Krishna Katha. When one is able to chant in ecstasy, he attains the stage of Smarnavastha, the stage of remembering. Recollection, absorption, meditation, constant remembrance and trance are the five items of progressive Krishna Smarna. At first, remembrance of Krishna may be interrupted at intervals, but later remembrance proceeds uninterrupted. This is another question one can ask themselves. When remembrance is uninterrupted, it becomes concentrated and is called meditation. How many meditation gurus outside bhakti circle teach this? When meditation expands and becomes constant, it is called anusmriti. By uninterrupted and unceasing anusmriti, one enters the stage of samadhi or spiritual trance. After samarn, smarna dasha or samadhi has fully developed, the soul comes to understand his original constitutional position. At that time, he can perfectly and clearly understand his eternal relationship with Krishna. This is called Sampatti Das, the perfection of life. Chaitanya Charitamrita advises those who are neophytes to give up all kinds of motivated desires and simply engage in the regulated devotional service of the Lord according to the directions of scripture. In this way, a neophyte can gradually develop attachment for Krishna's name, fame, form, qualities, and so forth. When one has developed such attachment, he can spontaneously serve the lotus feet of Krishna, even without following the regulative principles. Of course, we don't do that in ISKCON. <laughs> like Shla Prabhupada himself was showing by his example, he was following all the chanting every day, doing so much service, following all the principles. So we don't have to do that, even if we get to spontaneous loving uh, service. But it's mentioned here, this is called Raga Bhakti or devotion service in spontaneous love. Um, we can remember, we don't have to do it, but we know the examples of Goswamis, the principal disciples of Lord Chaitanya. They showed in some of their activities um, these elements of Raga Bhakti. But there is more, but I guess I will just stop with this. And I just wanted to mention there are elements of Raga Bhakti in our practice also. Shla Prabhupada very geniusly intervened all these. Um, I was remembering one of the prayers every morning we do Tulsi prayer. 
So what are we asking when we are ask, saying Tulsi prayer? What are we asking when we are saying that prayer? We are asking for Krishna to be constantly manifested in our heart. We are asking for this Raga Bhakti. Um, in all different items there are like what kind of people study Srimad Bhagavatam? It's meant for Paramahamsas, those who have spontaneous love for Krishna. But we are studying Srimad Bhagavatam. So like Prabhus were explaining, the elements are already there, but one cannot experience that on neophyte stage, just like the example of sun. So, but when one comes to the spontaneous uh, loving attraction, attachment, that's when one can see these constantly. One can even see the pastimes that are not visible to conditioned beings, the uppercut pastimes. Um, yeah, but um, there are so many points, but we shouldn't think that we are practicing just regulative devotion service and there is no scope. Um, just one point I remember is the perfection of regulative devotion service is seen in Vakuntha planets because there the awe and veneration is present in full and that's why it was mentioned about Vraj Bhumi. In Vraj Bhumi um, this awe and veneration is not there. I will, con I will finish end with this one verse where Lord Chaitanya is describing this personally. Premaras nireyas karite ashvadan. This is what Brigupati Prabhu was saying that Lord Chaitanya came to give Raga Bhakti. Raga Marga Bhakti loke karite pracharan. Rasika sekhar Krishna param karuna. E dui hetu haite ichara udgama. So these are the internal reasons. But just like a few verses ahead, he, pretty much he is saying that uh, one is Krishna is not attracted just by uh, regulated service, and then he is saying like the devotees who are on spontaneous attraction, uh, he becomes captured by them because of their spontaneous attraction here mora putra mora sakha mora pranapati e bhave ye more kare shuddha bhakti apna ke bada mane amare samahin se bhave hai ami tahara adhin this is in adilila 4 if one cherishes pure loving devotion to me thinking of me as his son, his friend, or his beloved, regarding himself as great, and considering me his equal or inferior, I become subordinate to him. So we can remember even in life of Srila Prabhupada, he did some of, some things like that, pretty much um, like captured Krishna, and we can see before Srila Prabhupada so many gurus, were teaching all this but they couldn't have a big influence but coming Srila Prabhupada he, uh, he just, by his this uh, Prema Bhakti so many people became attracted and took to devotion service and by his mercy we have this access so uh, here we all are taking advantage but I'm sure we can all uh, take more advantage and be more absorbed in this way and qualify for spontaneous loving devotion service. So thank you very much. Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki, Shri La Prabhupada Ki, Jai.